Hi, my name is Richard Hutton and welcome to the Exponential Fund, the place where you learn to invest and absolutely crush average market returns. Well, sorry for no video last week. Uh, I tried to record and then it kept stopping on me. So I ran out of time and here we are. Anyway, <laughs> um, if you're new to the channel and I know there's a few new people, welcome. <clears throat> uh, these videos have like a three part, three parts. Number one, the performance of last week for the portfolio. Number two is tweets of last week, you know, just a stream of consciousness, ideas and trades I've made. And number three is a quick lesson, like a, a timeless principle that can be applied currently, right? So let's get into it. So the performance, I am happy to say that my portfolio, the exponential fund has outperformed the market. My portfolio was down only 2.4%, whereas the S&P 500 was down 2.65%. Uh, in finance, they call that an outperformance. It's not down as much. It's below the market. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> but um, it is what it is. We are officially in a bear market. That means that the S&P 500 is down 20% from its all-time high. <laughs> so, about the uh, new people. In the last few weeks, I've been touring the city, going around uh, to high schools to present a one-hour seminar about investing. Essentially, I tried to distill uh, my 10 years of experience into an hour. And I mean, you know, the kids seem, the kids seem to enjoy it. So I guess I did a good job. <clears throat> and, you know, some of you subscribed. Thank you. Um, I do recommend you look at my older videos because in pretty much every video, I try to put a timeless principle, right? So something that is relevant now and forever. Uh, I don't just talk about the news all the time, right? So <clears throat> in these videos, I can go deeper into some of the concepts that I talked about in that one hour presentation. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Now, I will only review the tweets from two weeks ago. I will let you discover the tweets of this week. So anyway, here's an idea. It is possible to absolutely crush average market returns with just one trade per decade, right? Uh, some people in the finance industry, correction, the absolute majority of people in the finance industry advocate for diversification, like the S&P 500. Invest in 500 companies and you can't go wrong. Yes, you will probably not go bankrupt if you invest in fucking 500 companies, but I'll almost guarantee that you will not get rich <laughs> investing in 500 companies. So <clears throat> the point is, if you don't know anything about investing and you want to invest, sure, buy a fucking index. <laughs> uh, but if you want to put just a little bit of time into studying this, I promise you, it's not as hard as people make it seem, right? So yes, some people use very complex fucking algorithms and spend a lot of time investing in the market, but that is not the only way. It is absolutely possible to make money long-term in the market with very simple strategies that take very little time, right? If I were to have access to a computer only 30 minutes 
once a year, I could absolutely demolish average returns over the long period, right? Because I know what to look for, those like few key aspects, right? And I would make a trade. I wouldn't get lost in the details. So about this idea of, um, you could make a lot of money with just one trade every 10 years. Uh, you simply have to you simply have to identify a generational buying opportunity All right so in 2010 when i started <clears throat> i analyzed a bunch of companies and i came to the conclusion that my number one favorite stock is apple now i did not have the wisdom to just buy and hold because i was taught in that book to trade, right? To just catch the uptrends and then sell before the crash and then keep doing this. I'm not saying it can't be done. It's uh, just adds way too much complexity. If I were to have just bought and hold, I would have made more than 10 times my money since then. I am not making that mistake again. So obviously nothing I see is financial advice, but my opinion is that the generational company of this decade is, of course, Tesla. So, being overly diversified essentially gives you low risk and low returns. Being very concentrated in super high quality companies offers you low risk and high returns. You just have to know how to find them. And you know, in these videos, I do show you super simple ways, like, you know, big companies that grow fast, so and so. I won't get into details. Look at my, look at my other videos. Now, this stock market crash is historical and we are living through it now. Uh, it is, you know, officially a bear market and a lot of great companies that continued to grow their sales and profits over the last year got absolutely demolished, like down 70, 80%. That's insane, right? So you could make the argument, well, they were overvalued before and now... Um, it is much more likely that they are undervalued now versus they were overvalued then. You know, if you see, if there's a big move in the market, it is more likely to be an overreaction, right? So anyway, two weeks ago on Wednesday, I bought more square or block. <clears throat> Just to put it into context, Block is a, is a $50 billion company that grew its sales last year by 85%, only 85%. And if you were to buy now, and obviously I'm not advising you to buy, but if you were to, and you'd wait just for it to get back up to its all-time high, you'd make four times your money. I mean, that's moderately neato. That's uh, fairly decent. Uh, that's uh, not too bad if you ask me. Now, obviously, how long will it take? In a crazy optimistic scenario, it is possible that it only takes a few months. But even if it takes five years, to make 400% in five years, that is a astonishing returns and I would estimate it is very likely that it will get back to its previous all-time high in less than five years so <clears throat> next tweet thinking long term has such powerful positive consequences it's like a superpower it can improve the quality of your decisions by orders of magnitude, right? So 
if you haven't heard this expression orders of magnitude uh, it means by adding a zero so by 10x so and so next tweet i believe one day tesla bots will help build a factory where tesla bots will be <laughs> building more tesla bots the feedback loop will be insane tesla stock to one quadrillion dollars that's right i believe in in, in a, an optimistic scenario if given enough time like 20 years 30 years uh, tesla stock can increase 1000 times now you may think wait a minute uh, that's more than the entire world gdp exactly i'm glad you noticed uh, that's because the tesla bot will be a general purpose worker and thus we will no longer have a labor shortage actually the cost of labor will absolutely plummet and thus the size of the world economy will dramatically increase by orders of magnitude 10x 100x 1000x and it will not stop the size of the economy will only be limited by the current by the available energy and if we just were to use the sun as our source of energy if i remember correctly <clears throat> we could increase our energy consumption by one million times so you know <laughs> uh, there's a lot of room to grow you know these uh, stock projections are entering the realm of science fiction like you need creativity if you use a model to analyze a company that you learned in an ivy league school let's say that model works most of the time works with 99 percent of the companies and it absolutely goes to shit in those generational companies because you are taught that you cannot fathom that such a large company can remain in hyper growth for so long this are never this has never been done before okay so can't a company come and then grow this fast for this long what we'll see two weeks ago on thursday i bought more c limited and the next day it went up 22 <laughs> percent it's not insider trading i swear <laughs> uh no the point is <clears throat> that the biggest gains come after the worst crashes right so this would be the lesson of the week you gotta embrace volatility you know know when to be contrarian <sighs> that's what makes an investment opportunity low risk and high return is if most people don't agree with you right so taking the example of tesla i believe <clears throat> tesla is low risk high reward meaning it has a very low chance of going bankrupt in the next five years and <clears throat> it has a high chance of being significantly up in five years now why is this well if the majority of people would agree with this then they would have already bought tesla stock so tesla would already be much more richly valued and it wouldn't have much room to grow for the stock even if the company itself would grow the sales and profits passively but if everybody anticipated that there is no opportunity right the opportunity lies in that disconnect 
in the difference between my opinion and the opinion of the majority, right? And the thing is, so I am taking a risk here. It might not work out. Yes, I understand. <clears throat> no, I don't have the arrogance to think that uh, I'm never wrong. Uh, when I will say that, that will be my demise. <laughs> so, uh, I'm trying to stay humble here. That's why I'm putting out these videos. I want to share my journey, my thought process. And look, uh, you know, if you disagree with me, you know, feel free to share. Let's learn together. I am open to changing my mind if I am presented with compelling uh, opposing views, right? So I do not claim to have the ultimate truth. Uh, I simply think, you know, this is the best idea I currently have based on what I learned so far. And there's still a lot to learn, right? So essentially, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Uh, you know, if you like this video and you want to yeah, stay up to date, if you want to keep watching in the future, uh, you can subscribe so you get notified. And also, if you like my uh, you know, tweets, my streams of consciousness, I'll put a link down below to follow me at Hutton underscore Richard. Till next time.